Welcome to my show, The Women's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Women's Connection is a program about women who've had challenges and obstacles in their lives. But more important, it is what they've done about it. Our guest is one such woman. When she couldn't obtain answers to her medical questions, she set up a foundation to help other women in the same predicament. Robert Browning wrote, Grow old along with me. The, yes, the best is yet to be. The last of life for which the first was made. What did he know when he penned this? Was he referring to the last and main event in a woman's lifespan? As we approach the year 2000, there will be more than 44 million women in the United States and 42% of the world 42% of the women in the world going through the change, better known as menopause. How well prepared are you? More important, how well prepared is your doctor? Let us welcome Marie Logano and hear her experiences with the medical profession. Welcome, Marie. Nice Thank to you. have you. Now, you set up a foundation because you couldn't get medical ex explanations of what you were going through. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? We established the foundation not only because I couldn't find the answers, mm -hmm. but because thousands of women can't find the answers. Um, the problem is that the population has grown so fast, and so many women are hitting this age category at one time, the baby boomer, if you will. And they are all going to their doctors seeking the answers, and the physicians in this country have realized there's a lot of research out there, but no one has taken the time to pull it all together and maybe do further research uh, to help the women and to give them the answers. There's still a great deal that needs to be done, but um, the purpose of the foundation is to help them do that, to help the women find the answers, to uh, get research established, to help the physicians work with us and find the answers, and of course, uh, to advocate for all the women with city and local government. And having um, the world of science, whether it be the National Institute of Health, recognize the importance to begin long, long-term research on um, hormone replacement therapy, cardiovascular disease, and so forth. Now, what is the exact name of your foundation? It's the American Menopause Foundation. Mm -hmm. We will be. Uh, a year and a half old next month. Oh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. We are 20,000 strong. We are a group of uh, women cross-country, a network group uh, of physicians, of consumers like me and you, of uh, healthcare professionals, of corporations, and um, it's very exciting how fast it's grown. 20,000 a year and a half, that's marvelous. Mm -hmm. And you're located here in New York? Here in New York, yes. Okay, let's if somebody wants to join your foundation, what do they have to do? Pick up the telephone uh -huh. and dial 212-475-3107. That is miraculous. And we will send them information, tells them all about us and where we're going and we need their help to get there. Sounds like you've got a great network already for a year and a half to 20,000. Now you weren't always in the medical profession. You were in corporate life for a while? I spent 30 years in corporate America, yes. Uh, 28 was years of those were spent on Wall Street. Um, it gave me a great foundation, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, for how to run a business, since um, I understand the, the upside downs and the bottom line, basically. And since I'm a doer and uh -huh. spent many years in voluntary work also, and uh, 12 years or more on the community board in the city here. I know how to get things done through the city, and I know Just how to work with knack. people, and we are a terrific group of doers, and we will get things changed. I'm glad. I mean, it's uh, wonderful. Thank you. Now, what exactly, let's go back and define what exactly is menopause? Menopause is that time of life when a woman will cease menstruating for 12 consecutive months. Mm -hmm. All of the time and the problems associated with what they call menopause is really in the perimenopausal stage, which is the time before the last cessation of the menses. 
Now, what happens during this process? Yeah. All kinds of things could happen. You could wake up in the middle of the night soaking wet and wonder, why is this happening to me? Um, you could lose your memory to a degree. They call it a short-term memory loss. And I'm sure you've experienced this. You've walked into a room and you say, what am I doing here? Right. You open the closet and you knew you were going there for something. <laughs> And all of these things start happening. Another one, of course, is depression, mm -hmm. anxiety. I think so much of the anxiety that women in perimenopause and menopause are experiencing today is because um, they're confused about whether they should take estrogen, whether they shouldn't take estrogen, whether it should be a synthetic, whether it should be natural, whether they should just give up and have a hysterectomy. Well, um, I know doctor, there's a lot of doctors out there who advocate having a hysterectomy to solve all the problems. I don't think that's where those problems get solved. I think well, part of, of what we're looking at is where does the problem get solved? A lot of the problem that women are experiencing today is that they don't have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And this is where our support groups come in. That's we have support groups all over the country, two here in New York, as a matter of fact. Oh that anyone can come to. Where are they and, uh, Where and when? Uh, the one on the island is um, the second Monday of every month. Mm -hmm. And the one um, here in the city is up on the Upper West Side. But if they call the foundation, we'll be glad to tell them where it is and what time exactly. And this is where we try to provide a health provider, a doctor, a psychiatrist, a physician, a nurse practitioner who are fabulous people and talking to women about uh, menopause, um, where they can pick each other's brains and find out, what doctor are you going to? Uh -huh. What are you taking? You did what? It, it's the <laughs> sharing and the understanding. And this is part of our educational program as we, we are educating women. As part of our advocacy program, um, just this past Monday, I was up in Albany and we received a proclamation declaring the September Menopause Awareness Month. Fabulous. What it a is. In a year and a half you did all this? It's very exciting. Well, I was very fortunate to work with our assemblyman here in New York, Steve Sanders, uh -huh. and Senator Kruger, who both uh, ran before me with the torch. And uh, it was just a very exciting day for the foundation. As a result of that, and in working with uh, Eli Lilly, mm -hmm. who has agreed to underwrite a program of education for women, we plan to do that September 18 here in New York City. Of course, we mm -hmm. intend to take it across the country. Oh, that's great. But it's because New York was the first state to recognize this problem and the fact that it has to be addressed and women have to learn. They um, have all worked together to get this program going and we're very excited about it. We hope everyone can come. I think you're going to have a big turnout. I hope so. That would be fabulous. Besides the fact people have night sweats and they have disorientation and short-term memory loss, and hopefully it goes away as they go through the period, uh, what other side effects do they, not well, side effects, there are There are serious go? problems that women have to learn about, and this is why education is one of our goals. When you look at the statistics, because of the large number of women in this age category and in this time of their life, Statistics such as 500,000 women a year die <coughs> pardon me, of cardiovascular disease. Uh -huh. Science is beginning to discover that it, it probably is because of a lack of estrogen. I was at a conference at Columbia just two weekends ago where a very brilliant doctor stood up and apologized to all the women in the room because they have finally realized from their research that yes, indeed, the heart is different from a man and a woman, particularly the heart of a woman at menopause. But he is, history. he is rereading his research. He is um, humble enough and smart enough to understand the need to go back and study and begin more research. So we're very fortunate that there are those type of scientists in the medical profession. Are, there, is, are they few and far <coughs> between, or are more people realizing that they've got to get uh, the doctors that have to go back and realize and say, okay, I've got to study up on this. I mean, everybody's changing. There's they are changing. They are changing slowly but surely, mm -hmm. and they're coming around. Uh, there's a great deal of research being done with some of the pharmaceutical companies along with some very good physicians recognizing that this 
the state, this country that we live in, spends $10 billion a year treating osteoporosis, and that's a preventable disease. What preventable. we in the foundation uh, are doing is educating women to start looking for possible symptoms of osteoporosis, not when you're 52 and your doctor believes, after looking at a bone density test, yes, indeed, you have osteoporosis, but to start at 35 when your hormones begin to change that maybe your diet should change and maybe you should increase your intake of vegetables maybe you should really get into some kind of exercise <laughs> and keep the the bone density strong it's preventive medicine absolutely and but people if you, are really slack on that mm -hmm, very much so and if you don't know it's there you'll wait until your estrogen is com depleted well when you hear about uh, menopause you always think of late 40s, early 50s of women going through the change, and nobody ever really stops to think that, hey, you should really be doing this all your life as being um, diet conscious, health food conscious, as well as exercise mm -hmm. to keep you in the prime of your life throughout <coughs> your life. Absolutely. And I think uh, with your foundation, you'll be able to educate a lot more people, as well as the men and the doctors in this country. Definitely. One of the wonderful things about our support groups is that young women, and I'm talking about women in their early 30s, come sometimes with their mother and sometimes without them. The ones that come without them want to know, why is mom acting like this? <laughs> That's right. marvelous. And they've heard about our foundation. And the mothers that are smart enough to bring their daughters are teaching them at a young age that this is not the worst thing in the world that happens mm -hmm. to us. Margaret Mead said there is a zest that happens to women at menopause. And I believe that. There's a very positive side to this. If you take care of yourself and exercise and eat right and read and learn what's happening to your body and sit and talk with your physician about it, sit and talk with a nurse practitioner, and corporations are beginning to realize that by educating the women vis-a-vis -vis the foundation and our programs, they're going to save money in the long run. Well, they, you have to really start at the top and work down because still at the top, corporate top level, you've got the men in their 60s and 70s ready to be t retire, mm -hmm. and they have never really gone through the, uh, the problems that are coming up today in such vast numbers because the women are just really, not that they're entering the uh, workforce because they've been here, it's just mm -hmm. that we're getting more recognition. Mm -hmm. And uh, their mothers never talked about it. That's and I right. know our, my mother never talked about it. She never talked about anything. It was very difficult, you know, like, what's going on? Well, get a book and read it, you know, and that's not how to be educated. It's mm -hmm. education, but it's not the one-on-one -on -one education. One of the things that we are telling um, or asking the women in our support groups and in our network is to talk to their daughters about what's happening and to share it with them. Share it with your family, because if they don't understand it, you don't understand it to begin right. with. So how are they, they don't understand, understand it. it. You've got a family of non-communicative <laughs> people. <laughs> and the, the situation we have found is very much the same when it comes to a woman and a doctor. The important thing in menopause is to really be truthful with the doctor whether you're experiencing a loss of libido, which a lot of women do, mm -hmm. and they're afraid to say this to the doctor because they've never mentioned sex before, whether they're having a terrible time having intercourse with their husbands because of vaginal dryness, and they don't quite know how to broach that with the doctor. There are things on the market that the doctor can prescribe which can help. Well, then if they're having trouble discussing it with their hus uh, the doctors, are they also having trouble discussing it with their husbands? I yes, mean, of course. So this is not a win-win situation if you're not discussing and you're not open about mm -hmm. it. You know, like I'm not interested in sex anymore, but hey, two weeks ago I was ready, you know, mm -hmm. and now I don't want you to come near me. Absolutely. I mean, this is not a good, healthy relationship. It's got to, you know, This is the importance of, of the education and communicating. And many women, after they learn, whether it be at, uh, at the support groups or just the mm -hmm. sharing part of it, they do go home and have a different talk with their, uh, their husband, That's a different awesome. kind of communication, and different kind of communications with their doctors. We tell them to write it down. 
so that sometimes like they might not be able to say it, mm -hmm. but they, they could hand him a list of three things they would really like to discuss after he examines them. And one of them could be, why don't I feel like having sex with my husband anymore? And why is it so painful? Mm -hmm. This is all part of the lack of estrogen in a woman's body. But there are solutions out there. And that's what's so great. There mm -hmm. are solutions, so just verbalize what's going mm -hmm. on. Because you feel when you're going through something, no matter what it is, that you're the only one. And with your support groups, as you say, you say, hey, I'm not the only one. There's a world out there that is going through the same right. aggravation because their that's mothers right. never talked about it. And in some cases, mothers aren't around that you can't talk. That's the sad about. part. Family history is very important. They need to know what the history of breast cancer is in their family. They need to know at a young age what the family history is about osteoporosis, heart disease, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer. All of these are very important so that your physician will know how to prescribe the correct drugs. How far back do they have to go as far as family history? As far back as you can go. If now, you have a grandmother, you're very lucky. <laughs> now, you're what about lucky. both sides? Is it as important on of the course, father's because side? Because we're a okay. combination of both. So if you know that on your father's side, his mother died of uterine cancer, uh -huh. his sister died of breast cancer, all of this is part of what makes you. So right. write it down. And more importantly, pass it along to your daughters and your nieces well, because they are part of the same chemistry also. Well, when you think about it, there's all these programs that talk about family tree makers that you can write down your uh, genealogy of your families, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, and everything else. It sounds mm -hmm. like you should have this with your family of medical problems, too. Oh, I absolutely. Mean, just, so you can see the tracing, and because some things, as I understand, can skip a generation. So if it doesn't happen to you, it can happen to somebody else, or it might well, not. Well, they're not quite sure. As a matter of fact, um, in some of the research that I did, as early as the fourth century, they were, they're still trying to determine what is the exact age that menopause happens. Is it 51.2, <laughs> which is the average, or is it 50 in a particular group of women in a mm -hmm. particular part of the world, in a particular country? What is the um, effect of diet? So from the fourth century to today, because we are all many different families. Right. There isn't one specific date that you could say. I don't see how they could even uh, think of something like that because there's so much intermarriage in cultures and ethnic groups around the world that well, it history. changes. History is, has been recorded, as a matter of fact, and as I said, from, mm. the, from the fourth century. Right. They've been trying to decide exactly why does it happen to a certain group of women at one particular age and a different group of women at a different age. Mm -hmm. Why is it that some women are more prone to osteoporosis and others aren't? Why is it that if heart disease is in the family, some have a normal cholesterol reading, right. others definitely, you could see that their arteries are getting clogged because of the, the menopausal time or the perimenopausal time, and uh, they need to know this. Well, going back to the diet for a minute, because there was something interesting. I picked up a lot of these books, Menopausal Years, which is all um, organic ways to um, help yourself. And then I picked up another one, which was fabulous, Super Nutrition for Menopause by Anne Louise Gittleman. And she's the author of Super Nutrition for Women also. And there's one thing that really broke my heart, because I'm a sugar eater and I'm a chocoholic. So, just to um, share You're in with the great audience, shape. I know, <laughs> but I don't really drink, and no, nobody can understand that. Sugar may be the number one cause of calcium imbalance. The sweet substance found in so many of our favorite foods depletes the body of phosphorus, so deplete your intake of calcium. If you're eating sugar, you're profoundly disturbing, disturbing the calcium phosphorus ratio. Without adequate phosphorus for transport, bone marrow doesn't get the calcium it needs, so the body pulls calcium for storage sites in bone. But this cannot be used either without, ad, ad, I'm getting tongue-tied here, without adequate phosphorus. And then it talks about how sugar really robs the body of other valuable, valuable nutrients, including calcium, magnesium, chromium, zinc, copper, and cobalt 
thereby causing an imbalance in all of the body's minerals. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to tell how much sugar you really have in a year, 120 pounds, because you don't realize how much refined sugar is in all mm -hmm. your food, mm -hmm. and it's so easy, as well as I, right now I'm really watching my sodium intake. And an, eat an apple. Eat an apple a day, <laughs> keep the doctor away. We're right back to uh, the it's, old It comes folklore. down to, as a matter of fact, Anne Louise Gittleman, the author of that book, will uh, be a speaker oh. at the symposium in September. We're really delighted to have her. And um, it's the, important, uh, the importance of nutrition. Not, not after you're 50, but before. Right. To keep the heart and the bones and the artery and everything else going. And fruit is great for you. The green vegetable is fabulous. An interesting thing with uh, Dr. Cohen, who is uh, with the North Shore Women's Program, who is a supporter of the foundation and uh -huh. has a support group out there with us. Um, when he sees a woman so concerned about calcium, he loves to tell them, have you ever seen a cow drink a glass of milk? <laughs> and of course, <laughs> they say no. And that's when he said, you see, they eat green all the time. Isn't eat it? your vegetables. <laughs> eat the vegetables. And the, the women definitely get the picture. There's more calcium from vegetables than a glass of milk. If you don't like milk at 50 years of age, eat a nice salad. Eat a bunch of fruit. And the there's green so many stuff, benefits. The carrots, from absolutely. From the salads. Absolutely. You know, it's the fiber in your diet. I was reading an article doing some research for this, and a lot of women in Japan don't get hot flashes because they eat a lot of tofu. Chofu. Tofu. Tofu is it's very good. As a matter of fact, um, I heard a scientist who is doing tremendous research, particularly of menopausal women, about the diet of the uh, Eastern diet in comparison to the Western diet. And yes, they do eat a lot of tofu, but. By the time, he said when he began his lecture, by the time I begin, finish my lecture, my data will be old. So <laughs> I've got to go back. And perhaps within the next year or so, he will find the answer. And there's a great group of scientists studying that. And if they do find the answer to, is that really the key, it would be fabulous. Oh, I think so. Because I think it's an inexpensive product. Sure. And you can get it more and more. Well, at least in New York, you can get it more and more in all these Korean delis and so forth. And I've been seeing it in the various supermarkets. So it's an easy thing to It can't consider. hurt you. Right. The wonderful part about tofu is that you could really put it in almost anything. And it's like a big sponge. It will absorb the flavor of everything that's around it. And your children won't even know that they're eating tofu. Can you put it in a milkshake? I'm not sure about a milkshake, but make a definitely milkshake. a salad. Right. It tastes just like a piece of lettuce with some dressing on it. <laughs> you can put it in scrambled eggs. I've had women tell me they put it in scrambled eggs. They uh, give it to their kids in just about everything other than their cereal in the morning. But it's a good source of protein. It's a good calcium. And it's painless. Much better than, than osteoporosis when it's you're 50 true. years old. It's amazing so. because the doctors, you know, I would see some women curved over and with all the hormonal treatments people can go through, it's a wonder that they didn't start earlier or check it out or see their parents going through this change. This so is part of the awareness. Uh, so many, as a matter of fact, one prominent woman said to me, menopause is nonsense, and got up and walked away from the table very hunched over. Obviously, no one ever said to her when she was young, what a shame. do you realize that this is preventable? A woman in our support group stood up, 71 years old. She said, look at me. I am riddled with osteoporosis. Why didn't anybody tell me about this? But fortunately, she knows now. Right. And She's she was directed to a gradual exercise program, which mm -hmm. will help her keep her bone strong, the little bone that she has, but it will improve it. And at least she knows that it might, she might be able to prevent it from getting worse. And that's part of it. Well, that's very important because, mm -hmm. like you say, knowledge is power and it helps. The power come, stays within yourself to maintain good health. Mm -hmm. I Definitely. mean, it's like, now if women want to get involved in helping you, Oh, we could use help. We are, we're a network of volunteers. Anyone that wants to volunteer, may I give them the number Absolutely. again? Absolutely. Please feel free to call 
four seven five three one zero seven. Um, anyone that's familiar with a computer or has one at home that likes to uh, do things on the computer, we could have our computer talk to each other. But we always need volunteers for doing our mailings and such. Uh -huh. And of course, for the program coming up in September, we can use every able body we can get. How many guest speakers are you going to have for that? We'll have four. Uh huh. Uh, one of them is uh, Dr. Helen Fisher, who is an anthropologist here in the New York uh, Museum of Natural History. Uh huh. And Louise Gittleman, a nutritionist, a uh, very prominent uh, physician, Dr. Marcia Storch, along with uh, Edith Weiner, who is an author and futurist. So she will tell us about the future of women in management and manage health care and so forth. Well, that's great. I mean, the health care companies should get a, uh, on the bandwagon also because it'll save them money, save the government money. They'll get on the bandwagon. <laughs> They'll hear about us. I and can't thank, wait. Thanks to you and putting us on the television. Well, my pleasure. I think More it's an important topic. Thank you. I think it's extremely important. And, you know, if we can spread the word, I don't know, are you going to get on the internet or? We are on the, oh, the internet. Are. Yes, Dr. Jones Stalker up in the uh, University of Portland in Oregon. Ah. Every time uh, something happens, I get Dr. Joan on the phone and she tells the internet is a network of menopausal women of about 250 strong already cross country. That's marvelous. Yeah. yeah, so we're in there. Terrific. And does it go international at all or you don't? I don't know that. I don't know that. But who knows? You just never know where you're yeah. going to get a letter. Somebody's mm -hmm. going to join the American Menopause Foundation. Could be from Sydney, Australia. Definitely. Definitely. Branch it out. Uh, in the closing moments of the show, what would you like to say to the audience? as far as anything. What I'd like them to know is that we're here. We're here to help. Uh, that's what we're about. Spread the word that we're here so we could help everyone. Join us. Any donations would be gratefully accepted <laughs> to keep us going. And those that would want to volunteer, don't hesitate, hesitate to pick up the phone. We're very appreciative. And to you. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you, Barry. My pleasure. I'm glad you were able to come. Thank you. Grandmother used to say, you are what you eat. With our hectic lives, this is more important today than ever before. Are you eating healthy? And don't forget to compile your family history for you to know how to treat yourself in the years to come and for your siblings, as well as your children and grandchildren. Thank you for joining us. I would like to hear from you also. You can write me at the Woman's Connection, Post Office Box 918, New York, New York, one zero zero two three. See you soon. Oh yeah.